Hey Logan, just finished my coffee and now I'm getting in the car for my two and a half hour long road trip to Strasbourg to test, oh, almost forgot. To test Tesla's FSD. The car is at 76%. That's your destination. So I have arrived at my destination. It was two hours and 50 minutes, 20% battery. So the bummer is that uh, I cannot use the Osmo Action to record this demo. Now I know the reason why I didn't uh, see a lot of uh, stabilized footage or like uh, GoPro style uh, footage from the tests. It's a bummer, I don't understand why, but yeah, those are the rules. Let's see how the test goes. So here it is, my first live FXD experience. And in just a couple of moments, I will be going through my first roundabout using FSD. As you can see, we don't have a line divider on the center of the road, but that's not an issue for FSD. It just follows the road perfectly. We are approaching the roundabout and lucky enough we have some traffic. So let's see how the car behaves. Very smooth stop. It waits for its turn and we get a nice overview of the roundabout, which really boosts the confidence that the vehicle sees everything. Don't forget that we are in Europe, so in the next 100 meters we will have another roundabout. This time we don't have the opportunity to have other participants in the traffic, so it's quite easy. Okay, so now we are merging on the highway. Very easy and confident, of course, not a lot of traffic, which makes things a bit easier. And there you go, adjusting the max speed. In this case, it's in percentage, but I've seen people stating that some other rides had it as a fixed offset in kilometers per hour. I was hoping for a higher speed limit highway section, but 90 kilometers an hour is the max we get until we merge out to follow the route to our destination, the shopping mall with its huge parking lot. It seemed very easy for FSD to get to this parking lot. A thing that I cannot say about me because there's a Tesla supercharger in this parking lot, so I had to come back to charge my car before leaving to Zurich. But I missed the entrance to the parking lot and I had to go around. As you see from the navigation and from the visualizations, it's not the easiest parking to get to. There are a lot of twists and turns and you have to really pay attention to the navigation and to the science. But for Tesla FSD, this was a piece of cake. At this turn, the car came really close to those white ports. And on my way back, I actually did the same turn with my car by driving manually. And I had to back up and readjust because I was afraid that I'm gonna hit one of those poles, but Tesla managed to do the turn in one move flawlessly. At this point I was really excited to see how Tesla searches and finds a parking spot and then how it maneuvers itself into it, but unfortunately it didn't happen. The Tesla employee actually told me that in that particular day FSD didn't seem to want to park at all anywhere. He just pulled over to the right like a robot taxi would do. The version of FSD that uh, we have here in Europe for testing right now doesn't let you choose the behavior at the destination as it does in the US. So you have no way of choosing to just leave you at the curb or to find a parking spot. Because I've watched a lot of YouTube videos, I knew that there's a way 
to make the car choose a different parking spot or to make the car try to park again. So I asked Tesla's employee to set the same destination again and engage FSD in the hopes that this time it will find a parking spot and park. The handling of parking lots is not perfect, especially in Europe. As you can see, FSD mistakes the green parking occupancy indicators to traffic lights and shows them accordingly in the visualization. And here FSD tried to go in the wrong way. To be honest, humans also mess it up in this kind of parking, as you will see in a moment. Again, it just pulled over and the FSD ride was finished. So I just gave up and went to our next destination. Now let's see how FSD manages to get out of this huge, hectic parking lot. Look at the left camera repeater. A car is approaching as we are getting ready to go. FSD does not seem to be intimidated and just cautiously proceeds. But then, for apparently no reason, it just stops a bit, then continues. Here it just flexes its politeness by letting this pedestrian cross. Of course, she waved, having no idea that she thanked a robot. Now pay attention to the car in front. It seems that it tries to go to the right so it can make a wider left turn to go out of the parking lot. But then it backs up. Wonder why? Wait and see how FSD handles the same situation. Did you spot it? Yes, they were about to go the wrong way. Now it's FSD stuff. And yes, we had to disengage. I told you this is not your ordinary parking lot. I have no idea why you should be on the left lane here. But in all fairness, I think FSD should have been able to make a better decision. It can definitely read huge road markings, like the arrow pointing to the right in this case. As a comparison, after using the superchargers here, I was also struggling a bit to find the exit. So yeah, this parking is quite complicated, even for human drivers. Here at this left turn, the position is quite inconvenient. The car is tilted away from the incoming traffic, but it sees cars from far away, at least until this other car pulls next to us. I was eager to see how this unfolds, but unfortunately the Tesla employee was not that patient and disengaged to do the maneuver herself. I don't think this was necessary to be honest. It always amazes me to see these bird eye views of roundabouts and the sheer amount of details that the car sees. Here I was surprised to see that FSD sees that traffic light in the distance. It is not pointed at us, but towards the right. Still, no problem for the main camera to see it. And yes, in case you're wondering, our version still has the legacy blue steering wheel icon. We are entering a 30 km per hour zone, but that doesn't seem to stop FSD from accelerating to the max speed that we can still set in this version. I will expect this to go away once we get the consumer version next year. I would under no circumstances want to go that fast in a 30 speed limit in Switzerland. And that should be a heads up for any one of you driving on Swiss roads, trust me. We tried another smaller shopping center, hoping that this time the car will pull into a parking space. But the robot taxi behavior was still in charge and the car pulled over very close to the entrance. I was amazed again of how much FSD can see. 
it sees a lot of the traffic outside the parking lot, although there are a lot of cars blocking the view. I myself can barely make sense of what's happening beyond the parked cars. Can you see the person crossing the road? I could barely see him, but FSD did, and it showed him on the screen even though the windshield was covered in rain. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm also amazed on how a car like this can be so advanced in terms of self-driving, but so bad at turning the wipers on when needed. Now pay attention to the next situation. Did you spot him? Here he is. The car braked hard, and I wasn't sure exactly why at first. Yeah, yeah, I know, you could argue that the pedestrian wasn't exactly on the crossing, but I think the car did the right thing, even if it might seem a bit too cautious. Just imagine if that person had been a child, running out from behind those cars. Moments like this increase my confidence that Tesla is close to solving FSD, close to making it unsupervised. This was my first taste of Tesla FSD in Europe, and I enjoyed it a lot. It is awesome, although not perfect. I have to admit, going back to my enhanced autopilot was hard even after a short ride like this. I am eagerly waiting for an approval next year in spring. Until then, keep watching for other non-FSD Tesla videos. See you in the next one.